Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is uh, beginning a new unit here uh, with gene control. How do we control which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off? And what we're finding as the Human Genome Project is over and we're analyzing more of that every day, trying to figure out more of the DNA that we see in the world, what we're finding is that the differences between organisms is not as much related to the proteins that we once thought it was. We thought at one time that it would be the proteins that would be related to whether a, an appendage grows or not. But what we have found is that all organisms, or many of those organisms, have that uh, the appendage growing uh, gene, but when it's turned on and how long it's left on is different or varies among organisms. So that is all related to, to the control. How do we control the genes inside of our cells? So the first is we look at these special proteins called regulatory proteins. Regulatory proteins act by modulating the ability of RNA polymerase uh, to bind to the promoter. So some of these regulatory proteins, RNA polymerase will be bound to the promoter, but they'll kind of be in the way to prevent that from happening. Others will mess up the ability for RNA polymerase to bind and stuff like that. So this binding of regulatory proteins could block transcription. So you've got uh, that protein's there and then RNA polymerase can't kind of get by it, so it's stuck, it's in the way. Regulatory protein's here in the way, can't get through. Um, that regulatory protein could bind and stimulate transcription. So it binds maybe back here somewhere on this side, RNA polymerase binds, and that actually gets the thing going faster. So these regulatory proteins go in both directions. They prevent it and they encourage it. Uh, prokaryotic control, what we have found is related to the survival of the cell in a changing environment. And bacteria are specialized in that ability to very quickly, uh, if the environmental conditions are right, use the resources, divide, produce as many as possible in a very short amount of time. Because of that, what you see in their DNA is actually uh, several genes encoding uh, different proteins that all go into to, to doing whatever it is it needs to do. We'll see a little bit of that in a minute. In the eukaryotic control, this control is more related to the survival of the whole organism in a changing environment. Uh, this deals more with homeostasis. So something in the environment has changed, some of my cells are going to have to produce certain enzymes or proteins or hormones or whatever to react to that change for my survival of my whole organism, not for the survival of just that one individual cell. In prokaryotic control, uh, there's a couple key terms that you're going to see, so you need to be uh, familiar with them. The first is positive control, and this increases the frequency of initiation and negative control, which decreases the frequency of initiation. Now, I've divided these up like this, but that doesn't mean that all of this is related to positive and all this is related to negative. It'd be nice if that was the case, but that's just not the, uh, the way it is. An activator binds to DNA and stimulates transcription, whereas a repressor binds to the operator to prevent or decrease transcription. And what you're going to find... Uh, in a minute is some of these actually all work together, so you'll see how that works. Induction are enzymes produced in response to a substrate. So something's in the environment, the cell produces an enzyme uh, that causes a reaction to take place, and that is an induction. These are inducers. Repression is the cell has the capability of producing that enzyme, but it doesn't when the repressor or it's being repressed, when there's a repression going on, it can make the enzymes, but it doesn't. Now what we're going to look at today are uh, two uh, genes or two, I guess, um, controls in prokaryotic cells. The first is one of the more common ones that you'll see. It's called the lac operon. In the lac operon, you have, this is the DNA, the black line, okay? Here's the operator. Notice that on this one, you have the LAC repressor. Now what happens when that cell is in the presence uh, at an environment that does not have lactose, 
the repressor will bind to the operator, and although RNA polymerase may bind down here, it cannot get by to these genes. Now, what we have found in prokaryotes is Z, Y, and A. Sometimes those are referred to lack Z, lack Y, lack A. These will code for proteins that are key in breaking lactose down and using it for energy. So when there's none present, the lac repressor is going to bind to the operator, no enzymes will be made, and really you think that makes sense because you don't need enzymes to break down lactose if there's no lactose. When there is lactose, the cell will produce an inducer called allolactose. Allolactose will bind to the repressor, it will change its shape, See, it's a little bit wider here, narrower here. That won't be able to bind to the operator anymore. So RNA polymerase will proceed, make mRNA from the LAC-Z, the LAC-Y, and the LAC-A genes, and then produce the enzymes that the cell needs to break down lactose to produce energy. Now, there's been one molecule that's been present here that I've kind of uh, not mentioned much about right here. And that is the cap over here. The cap protein is actually a combination between this protein and this molecule right here, which is called CAMP. When glucose is absent, CAMP will bind to the cap, and the cap will bind to the DNA. This will actually encourage um, RNA polymerase to make uh, or transcribe the lac, the lac genes, the lac operon genes. When glucose is absent and lactose is present, you got allolactose here, so the operator is open, RNA polymerase will proceed, mRNA will be made, and lactose will be broken down for energy. When glucose is present down here in this one, notice there is no CAMP because CAMP is not going to be made whenever glucose is present. Glucose is present, cap cannot bind to the DNA, the repressor sits on the operator, and you've got no transcription of the lactose genes. Even if lactose is present, if glucose is also present, what we find is that the lac operon will be turned off. Now this will be related to the fact that the cell gets more energy out of glucose overall, than it does out of lactose. So if glucose is present, it focuses on breaking down glucose. When glucose runs out, if lactose is present, then this will bind, this will come off of the operator, and you'll get the enzymes needed to break down lactose. So you've got two controls there. These are both examples of negative control. Okay? And it's a little, it, it gets a little complicated, so you might want to go back and look at that again. Make sure you understand that. The last one is called the trip operon. It deals with the presence of tryptophan. When tryptophan is absent, tryptophan is an important amino acid that the cell needs. When tryptophan is absent, the trip repressor does not bond to the operator. The, MR, the RNA polymerase proceeds and you get mRNA. Now what you find here is that these are enzymes, A, B, C, D, and E, that actually all work together to make tryptophan. So whenever they're transcribed, the mRNA eventually will make proteins that will make tryptophan. When tryptophan is present, that's these little red molecules here, they will bind to the repressor, and that will change its shape. Notice the difference in the shape. That repressor will then, because now it's activated, will then bind to the operator, and that will keep RNA polymerase from transcribing these enzymes because the cell already has tryptophan. So why would you want to make enzymes to make tryptophan if tryptophan is already present? So when tryptophan is present, it turns this off, says we don't need to make tryptophan, we have it. When it's absent, the repressor will come off of the operator, RNA polymerase will proceed. This is also an example of negative control. We are using a repressor, once again, to lock in uh, that operator.